as a kid, I loved fantasy literature. Give me a book with potions, magical spells, and maybe an elf or two, and I was set. But it was the magical spells that intrigued me the most. They could be tricky, those magical spells. You could have this amazing power unleashing it all over that school bus bully, Doug. Uh, wait, sorry. But you had to know the exact words to make this awesome power come to life. And sometimes, if you said that spell not exactly right, you could accidentally make something really terrible happen. FPGAs can be a little bit like that. FPGAs are capable of amazing things, particularly when it comes to accelerating computation. They can zap your algorithm up to supernatural speeds with a seemingly magical level of power efficiency. However, the incantations to unlock that spell have to be written in an ancient and cryptic tongue, long forgotten by many and never learned by most. That's right, we're talking about VHDL and Verilog. Nobody wants to have to learn those hardware description languages in order to accelerate their algorithm to miraculous speeds. But we still want to harness the power of FPGAs to make our stuff run fast. What do we do? Go to wizard school? <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today's FPGAs have amazing capabilities, but most of us don't have the time to become experts in HDL in order to take advantage of them. Don't worry, help is on the way. My guest today is Albert Chang of Altera, who will be talking with me about OpenCL. That's right, the same language that is used for programming parallel processors like graphics chips can now be used to program FPGAs. Also, before we get started, remember to click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free white paper entitled Implementing FPGA Design with the OpenCL Standard. Welcome, Albert. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much, Amelia. I'm excited to be here. So high performance design isn't new. The industry has always had a huge appetite for more and more performance. How have people found the performance they need until now? So if you look back at CPUs and if you remember buying a PC or a laptop, mm -hmm. you'll find that the processor speed continues to increase. So if you want to run that game or software faster, you'd buy the latest laptop or PC. Sure. What you find today is if you go to any stores, you don't find an 8 gigahertz processor. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen one recently. So what you'll find is CPU scaling or frequency scaling has really stopped. And that was the methodology of increasing your processor speed mm -hmm. as we went on gigahertz to two gigahertz to three gigahertz and again we don't really see eight gigahertz today and so you are demanding more and more performance and the industry is trying to find a way to provide you that performance and so what they did was they went from sort of the single core cpus and dsps to multi-cores where they now provide dual cores quad cores eight and up to maybe 16 cores for the customers. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, as demand for performance continues to increase, what they found was instead of 8 to 16, customers wanted even more. And the industry provided arrays of processors, where you're now you're talking about hundreds of processors that are provided through a GP GPU. And what you'll find is, if you take a look at that trend, what you'll find is they're moving towards more programmability and more parallelism. Mm, okay. And if you look at an FPGA, FPGAs are naturally very parallel. Okay, Albert, you just said that FPGAs are naturally parallel. What do you mean by that? So if you take a look at a modern FPGA, they're actually massively parallel. Let's take a quick look. If you look at a modern FPGA, you have over a million logic elements, billions of transistors, thousands of memory blocks and DSP blocks, hundreds of IOs, including high-speed transceivers, all available for hardware acceleration. Now, Albert, we wouldn't just implement our entire complicated algorithm in the hardware in the FPGA, right? Well, what you'd commonly find is the FPGA sits next to a processor. Ah. And what happens is the performance intensive functions that can't be met on a processor is then offloaded to a hardware accelerator like an FPGA. And that's something that we've seen for many, many years. 
and you see that adoption continue to grow. For example, if you take a look at some of the other companies in the industry like Intel, Apple, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, TI, they're all looking to embed ARM processor, in fact, their dual core ARM processors into their device. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the FPGA industry, take a look at Altera and Xilinx, we've also provide embedded ARM processors into our FPGAs, what we call SOC FPGAs. Okay, so how would someone program this combination of processor and hardware accelerators? You know, that's a challenge that we hear all the time. If you take a look at it, you have the FPGA program model, which is vastly different than the software program model. The FPGA program model looks at a hardware description language, or HDL, which you typically write in VHDL or in Verilog. Okay. And what you'll have to do is really describe your design's behavior cycle by cycle. Mm -hmm. You'd write the state machines, how the data path is constructed, the different arbitration scheme they're using, and even buffering. Now let's take a look at the software program model. Okay. The software program model lets you program at a high level using C or C++. You'd write your C code typically sequentially, which would also include subroutines and functions. Okay. And what you're really looking for is a single design environment that targets this heterogeneous system. Okay, that makes sense. I can see how a single unified design environment would make this job a whole lot easier. And that's what OpenCL provides. OpenCL looks to solve this hardware and software design flow in a different way. If you take a look at an embedded system, the CPU is often the heart of the system for basic control logic. This can be a hard external processor or soft processor within the FPGA. The accelerator is often a slave to the CPU and increases performance when performance cannot be met in software running on a CPU. OpenCL attempts to preserve the software paradigm and looks to abstract away the hardware accelerator piece by using an open standard extension of the C language. Let's look at OpenCL in a little bit more detail. OpenCL was developed by Apple in 2008 and is now managed by a large industry-wide consortium, also known as the Kronos Group. OpenCL is a program model for software engineers and a methodology for a system architect or engineering management. It uses standard ANSI C and OpenCL C, which is standard C with some extensions to add parallelism. Okay. OpenCL also includes an API, a standard interface, for the CPU to communicate with the hardware accelerator. One of the key benefits of OpenCL is that it is an open standard. It's royalty-free and hardware platform agnostic. Great. The OpenCL model allows any CPU to communicate with any hardware accelerator. It's up to the individual CPU and hardware accelerator vendors to abstract away vendor-specific implementation in order to meet conformance testing. Using the model, the whole CPU offloads performance-intensive functions to the hardware accelerator in the form of kernels, and the CPU can spawn off many kernels. Okay, so tell us a couple more details of the OpenCL programming model. Sure. So the OpenCL program model really consists of two parts. One is the host program, and the other is the kernel program. Okay. The host program runs on a host processor, and basically is your C sequential code. When it needs to accelerate some of the performance intensive functions, it then calls the kernel program which sits on the hardware accelerator. Okay. The kernel program runs on the hardware accelerator. OpenCL also allows you to control the memory management within the kernel on the hardware accelerator. So Altera makes FPGAs, right? How do you apply a model like this to an FPGA? That's a good question. So if you take a look at the OpenCL program model, again, it consists of a host program as well as the kernel program. On the host side, you can use any standard C compiler that can take your host code and generate a x86 binary that can run on your processor. On the kernel side, Altera provides an SDK for OpenCL, which consists of a compiler that can take your kernel code and generate a programming file. Now keep in mind of what I just said, it takes your kernel code and generates a programming file. So the compiler takes care of the synthesis, 
the clustering,、mm-hmm. placement, routing, time enclosure. All of that is taken care of for you, so that you can use the OpenCL program model to target an FPGA. Okay, can you explain what the hardware architecture looks like? Sure. So what Altera provides behind the scenes is a template for this OpenCL solutions. Okay. The template consists of a PCI Express core, which acts as the communication channel between the processor and your kernel, as well as memory controllers, so that your kernels can access external memory, or in the OpenCL world, it's called global memory. This template not only provides you with these IP functions, but they're already placed in route, so you don't have to worry about it. Ah, okay. The Altera provider compiler also takes your kernel and generates. The FPJ logic, or what we're calling the kernel pipeline. Okay, Albert, what do you mean by kernel pipelines? Sure. Let's take a look at how you would map multi-threaded kernels to an FPGA. Now, the simplest way is to create some hardware logic to represent the kernel and replicate it throughout the entire FPGA. Okay. But that can be quite wasteful since after running the kernel, what is the logic going to be used for? Sure. So what we've done is taken a different approach and something that we call deep pipeline parallelism. Ah, okay. Which allows us to create these very deep pipeline kernels that allows us to execute multiple threads simultaneously. This seems a little confusing.、Um, can you give us an example? Sure. Let's take a look at an example of a vector add. Okay. In this example, we have eight threads, and each one of the threads is going to perform a vector add. On the first clock cycle, the first thread or thread zero is first loaded into the kernel. On the following clock cycle, thread one is now being loaded, while at the same time, thread zero is in preparation for the add function. As you can see in the next clock cycle, thread two is now being prepared to be loaded into the kernel, while at the same time, thread one is being prepared to be added into the add function. And thread zero has completed the add function and is now being prepared to be stored back into memory. Ah,、uh, okay. And as long as you keep this pipeline full, you can expect a result on every clock cycle. Okay, Albert. Can you give us an application example of this? Sure. Let's take a look at an example of GoHDR. GoHDR is a company that developed a new video camera requiring intensive video processing. In fact, they're using their own proprietary video codec algorithms that require high performance. Okay. What they were looking at was running this on a processor, but it didn't meet the performance or power requirement that they were looking for, and so they looked to an FPGA for implementation. Now, because they were writing their algorithms in C, they were able to easily port their C code to OpenCL in less than a week. Wow. Okay. By porting their C code into an OpenCL with our OpenCL solution, they were able to target an FPGA right away. Without Altera's OpenCL solution. You would have to have a hardware designer manually convert your C algorithm into HDO, which can take anywhere between three to six months. Wow, that's quite a difference. Can you go over some of the key things we covered today? Sure. As we talked about earlier, the need for programmability and for parallelism really points to FPGAs in a heterogeneous system, and what OpenCL provides is a single design environment that targets this heterogeneous system. Altera's SDK for OpenCL provides a compiler to generate a program file from a kernel. Okay, great. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Albert. Thank you very much. Before we go, don't forget to click that Download Now button below your player. There, you can download a free white paper entitled "Implementing FPGA Design with the OpenCL Standard." For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks. Check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com.